Mm -hmm. This is too much for me to think about. All right, Patrick, you there? The uh, next to the word Patrick is muted. Uh, X across the muted. microphone. Yeah. There we go. Sorry. There we go. Perfect. All right. So we got the call to order and then attendance and then minutes. All right. So call the meeting to order to 7.03 on Leap Day, February 29th, uh, 2024. Call the meeting to order. Um, and Todd, do you want to just read off the committee members who are present? One second, Papa. Hold that one in can you say that again, Patrick? Make sure we hear you. I just wanted to ask you to read off the committee members that are present. Sure. Yeah, we just want to say their name and then I'll be on the record. Dennis Meehan. Alex Marshall. Liz Stanford. Jim Weaver. Bill Donovan. Karen Shu, Tom Council Liaison. And Todd Souza. And then online we have Patrick O'Reilly and Gwen joining us. And then our consultant guests. So all right. Thank you. And we have the minutes, which was circulated from the last meeting. Um, anybody have any changes to that at all? Hearing none, I'll take a motion. So moved. Bill, you can't. That wasn't in attendance. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Gwen, will you will you move? Sure. Okay. And is there a second on the committee? Yes. Yep. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Very good. That's approved. And Todd, I think uh do we want to have the council update? Yeah, first? Town council and liaison update next. Okay. Go ahead, Karen. Sure. Thanks. I appreciate you guys giving me the opportunity to give a quick update. I as you know, I haven't been able to attend the meetings, but I know Jean Marie has. And I just wanted to give a quick update on my behalf, because Jean Marie and I do somewhat have different opinions when it comes to the idea of the community center and where this is going. And I just wanted to give an update kind of where town council is and what we're thinking for next steps and where we're at today to set expectations as well, I think is important. Um, I took the opportunity to speak to each of my fellow counselors just to sort of gauge how they're feeling about this right now. I think there's def generally a consensus of like, we have a survey, we know that this is what the residents want, we hear them. And I mean, I watch all the meetings and I think the meetings are going great. I really appreciate the conversations. I think we have a lot of, of the back work that we need for this to continue to move forward. Um, this is a unique year though. So, cause we have a reevaluation coming and I know that Jane Marie kind of touched on it, but I am on the finance committee and I can tell you that we did kind of go through the reevaluation. And I think it's probably important to try to emphasize and let you guys know that what's gonna be coming out and what people are gonna be hearing is with the reevaluation, your taxes are most likely going up. Everyone's residential taxes are most likely going up because the residential values of everyone's property has increased, which is great, but now the tax burden has increased as well. Uh, we've done some modeling and they're talking about some big numbers between like five and maybe eight percent. And those are really big numbers. And I think that is a huge consideration that some of the counselors are thinking about, I think they're really stressed out about it. And so when we talk about a community center, I think while I want this on the ballot, I think there's a lot of people who are like, holy cow, like can we even be asking for more at this point? Um, I really think that there's a lot of room for, you know, education, I guess you could say with the counselors. And so I, I do go around, I watch all your meetings and I talk to them, you know, when the swim team won the States, my initial response was they deserve a pool. Um, and so uh, I just also wanted to kind of set expectations about what we're up against, I guess, at this point, where I continue to support this and want this on the ballot. It's a little bit different environment this year with the re-evaluation and things. And I just kind of wanted to touch to that. I think we're on track. I really think this is a very different situation. I think at, what, at certain points, I feel like we're competing with the school, but I think if you're not really paying close attention, they just started a whole new building steering committee. And then their chair resigned after the first meeting. So, and I don't want to gossip, but I'm also like, everyone's not in a great spot right here. And I don't really know what's going on with that. And that's why I really want to support this and continue to move forward. But I just want you to know the, the conversations that are having with counselors and what to expect when we do go to do the presentation. I don't know when that's scheduled. 
Well, it'll be end of April. Right. Okay. Yeah. Early May. Um. So anyway, I just wanted to give a little bit of different update than maybe what Jean Marie said because I do have a little bit of a different opinion. Um. But I really appreciate all the work you guys are doing, and I don't know if you're aware, but this was did become one of our goals. So town council had goal setting sessions, and one of the goals that I proposed and town council did adopt was to continue to support this process. So I just want you guys to know that there is support behind this, but I think with the tax reassessment and reevaluation coming out, I think we're gonna be up against some, some hard numbers. So thank you, Patrick. Sure, thank you. And you know, there's obviously a lot of education that has to happen with a reevaluation that goes forward for people, you know, understanding how, you know, some properties go up, some properties go down, the mill rate gets adjusted back to, you know, generally speaking, a lower number to, to mitigate that. So, you know, it, it definitely is something that the council needs to be very cognizant of to educate themselves and then in turn educate the public. That's absolutely. Thank you, Karen. What is the next item on the agenda? So the agenda is turning it over to, to uh, UTL for their five agenda items that they submitted tonight. So I will... Uh, Keith, you are you driving the, or is it? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me just make sure I get you as a co-host. Yes. Take it away. Thank you, Keith. Great. Thank you. Okay. Great. Uh, a pleasure to see everyone again. Um, uh, we've been hard at work over the last uh, few weeks, uh, making uh, updates to the operational plan, and then really starting to look at uh, some uh, some building sites, which is uh, pretty exciting. Uh, our our agenda for this evening, you know, I'll we'll turn it over to uh, Bowd King. We've got uh, Darren Barr here again, who's going to um, uh, go over some updates to the operational analysis uh, with some revised assumptions uh, that we've they've been working you know really closely with. Uh, uh, with Todd and his team to try and nail down, uh, you know, accurate and, um, uh, and, and realistic assumptions in order to base the, the financial analysis on. Um, we, we may have to, uh, I, I can show some images from a, a small case study that we're going to look at, but we actually might push this until a later meeting uh, with, uh, with Western Samson's. Uh, we had the opportunity to look at our program and start to look at prototypical building layouts to see how this looks in a one-story or a two-story model, and uh, and then some ideas about how big uh, some of the site elements, especially the parking, uh, would be. And all that is really uh, working towards uh, looking at some potential building sites and introducing the site matrix on how we're going to score and le and, and level these uh, in, in during our, our next meeting. Uh, and that's really going to be the 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 thrust of uh, of of the next meeting. Um, so we are kind of squarely in the middle of task two. Uh, we've got a, a really great handle on the program, the program options, and starting to dig into the site uh, in particular. Um, and then, as I mentioned, the next meeting on the twenty first, we're planning on looking at the site scores, uh, and then if, if selecting sites for test fitting, and we'll get a more a tailored approach to foot, fit it, putting these uh, fitting the building program on the sites, and then also some more site analysis about individual sites, really to look into the, the nitty gritty approaches, views, uh, topography, uh, things that really give a fuller picture of what of what some of the impacts of of these different building sites. Uh, and then we'll also uh, begin the discussion of uh, of our open house coming up, which we still need to decide on a date for, but we're shooting in April. There are some conflicts there and obviously working a little bit around school vacation in April. Um, but we are going to look at the, the program, uh, the cost uh, impacts, uh, the, the sites and how they scored, and then really starting to build up kind of look and feel and generate some excitement around the, uh, the the building program and the program elements and really how this might uh, try to get some feedback from uh, from the residents of, of Scarborough on uh, kind of the nature of the building and kind of more uh, touchy-feely aspects of it that really make it come alive in people's in people's mind. Um, actually, at this point, uh, Darren, do you have a deck to show or, um, or are you just going to talk to the updates? Oh, we're on mute. Broke the cardinal rule and talked while I was muted. If you want to let me share my screen, I can just go ahead and give some updates in terms of that, if everyone's comfortable with that. Great. So the good news is 
uh, as we went ahead and we made some changes uh, to the operational model, we found ourselves in a different um, five-year projection. And I apologize if you get the ugly side view, but I'm going ahead and looking at the screen so I make sure I, I talk to it. Um, effectively, where we're at is when we went ahead and made some adjustments to fee structure, in particular membership structure, we made some adjustments to capital improvement allocations. We made some adjustments to staffing. Uh, we end up at a point where first full year of operation, you're right at about 90% cost recovery. Um, then you see a little bump in year two and year three. So over on the right hand side, uh, average cost recovery between years two and years five puts you right at that 96%. I, I said this when we talked internally, um, <clears throat> a couple things. Number one, uh, Todd and, and the rest of the team, thank you so much for your input. Um, it was super, super helpful. Uh, I would offer this to the group and this is, it's just my opinion is part of your consulting team. Um, if we go ahead and if we get to a point where we want to start bumping membership fees up a little bit more, um, we're going to really quickly hit that point of diminishing returns. And what I mean by that is we're right on the edge of probably what the market can tolerate. Um, so while we could go ahead and maybe you bump those up a little bit more, um, the reality is you're going to start going ahead and losing some of the market penetration that you have. Um, same thing, my, my biggest concern from a staffing standpoint is I think you can absolutely run the building with the staffing that we have here. Um, as you can see on the screen, uh, that goes ahead and says uh, community center director, uh, one and a half of the admin positions, program coordinator, the aquatics manager, the four lifeguards, the maintenance foreman, the custodial, um, the two positions that I, I think I would encourage you to go ahead and to at least consider in the long term, maybe you don't open the building with them, but depending upon the performance of the building, um, that maintenance technician position at some point when you go ahead and talk about the amount of equipment that's in that building and when everything comes off a of warranty, um, I think that you're going to find the, the maintenance demands for a 90 to 95 hour a week building are going to be pretty significant. Um, so I would, I, I, again, I'm not chastising anything like that, guys, and I can't see anyone's reaction. So I don't know if you're throwing things at the screen or not. Um, but that one was, again, as a consultant, that one was a little bit of a concern. The other one that's a little bit of a concern is just the, the fitness coordinator position. Um, simply because that's an area where um, it's going to be tied to membership. It's going to be tied to a pretty significant amount of revenue. So having someone in that position uh, with that level of expertise or figuring out a way to get that expertise on staffing, I think is something that just in the long term, it might be something that you want to go ahead and look at. Um, I would not want to get any leaner than you currently are with your full-time staffing. Um, those are my opinions again. Um, but again, the, the changes that were made, um, adjusting this, adjusting membership rates, pulling out the 3% bank charges, um, going ahead and decreasing the capital improvement allocation, all of that swung the, uh, swung the, the five-year projection in, in the direction that we're showing. Um, be happy to answer any questions that anyone might have about numbers, but with the, the plan was when we got done with our call this evening, I was going to have, or I was going to ask uh, Keith and Brett to go ahead and send an updated copy of the Excel document to you guys so that you could go ahead and comb through one more time. Questions? Thank you. This um, looks a lot better. Um, but yeah, if you can send out the Excel spreadsheet so we can see all of the other data you've got at the bottom, it'd be great. Yep. Happy to do that. Happy, happy to do that. And just for folks that weren't here last meeting, we discussed after we looked at it, the goal was to get closer to 90. Um, uh, Darren came in with a very, which I appreciate, a very conservative approach. And I think the couple areas that we identified were um, Penetration rate was originally at 10%, which is anywhere from 8 to 18, I think, 
um, they talked about. So we we felt we went twelve rate twelve percent penetration rate. Um, we agreed to look at the staff, and so the positions that he talked about. The one difference that we have is we have a facilities department that's starting to grow a little bit, and so we can look at that to supplement some of those things. Um, we don't need to have two separate groups if they can build up and have some attrition through each other. Um, and then the membership rates, and Gwen was talking about what she paid at Cape. And so I went through and looked at all of our local competition. And this is not at the top of any charge rate, but it's kind of a sweet spot. And, and actually, when you look at like what Cape charges, it's fitness, it's a pool and a fitness room and it has nothing, no other facilities and it would be more than we'd be charging. So um, I think we're kind of right in that sweet spot, especially, you know, if this is, um, you know, to come to reality. So, um, and then, uh, I looked at the capital investment. Um, I think we started with 200. I knocked it down. I forget what I knocked it down to. Um, thinking that we have a kind of a level we'll warranty period and to be able to build that up and then see where we're at with some of those direct costs. Um, I think we were also at 150 down. starting off with the capital improvement, but you're right. Going ahead and, and dropping it down was not a big issue. Yeah. And then also looking at, we talked about, and it doesn't reflect here anything. I didn't touch any of the program fees that or types of programs that he projected, because I think those are all pretty accurate. I think there's room to grow there. But again, I was conservative on that and I didn't adjust those at all. Um, and then on um, this, uh, I think the only other thing, again, was adjusting the staffing based on what we presently have for, for staff in-house. Um, uh, and uh, gone from there. So those were the things that you guys had recommended. And so I made those adjustments uh, after I did the evaluation of these, what everyone else is charging around us. Yeah, I mean, I thought they were, I thought they were very reasonable adjustments to go ahead and make. Again, it's just one of those where, you know, um, we were a little conservative with the first time around. I'm not sure how much more in some areas you'd want to shave down, but at the same point, it, it goes ahead and it paints the picture. And, you know, if the, if the facility program changes, obviously we can go ahead and make further adjustments to that if we need to. Anybody have okay. any questions? Thanks guys. Great. Thank you very much, Darren. Um, awesome. Uh, so as I mentioned, we might re return to this uh, topic. Uh, I'm sharing my screen tonight. Um, uh, to to talk more and more in depth with uh, Weston Sampson, uh, they've been doing. They uh, were the uh, Clark's consultant and engineer for the Newtown um, Recreation Center. It's really ge generally built around. Uh, there's no. There's not really a, a gym component, but there's a big aquatics component and then community component. Um, and we wanted to talk a little more in depth about uh, about the secondary pool. You know, they they design something that's kind of much more regular in shape. Um, and I know it's been really successful and Wesson Sampson is doing some additional work on their, on their community campus. I believe they're doing an outdoor uh, splash pad. Um, and so they've had uh, quite a, quite a bit of feedback from the community and from the operations uh, on how this has been going. And, um, I, I think this is worth, um, digging into and getting it straight, uh, from, uh, from Mark, uh, cause he's the engineer on the project, but we've been showing something more akin to this just because, uh, from what he's told me, the program actually is working really well in terms of offering, uh, space for a lot of activities, but giving the flexibility, uh, uh, for all the activities to happen, that happen as opposed to something that's maybe got more of a eccentric layout or more built in features like slides, et cetera. Well, some of those things can be, uh, can be added, but, we have some images here, uh, but we can we'll include this in the deck. But I think we'll have Mark come and, and expand upon it a little bit more because he's talking uh, quite a bit with the uh, operational uh, side, and he has some interesting uh, information about uh, membership and who is using the pool and and how it's being used and the programming. So uh, we'll, we'll hear more about that later. Uh, so the updated building program this hasn't changed since the last time uh, we looked at it and circulated it. Um, yeah, we were showing a gross building of 86,000 square feet. This, I believe, it, it shrunk a little bit as we started to uh, get a little more serious about uh, a, a test fit uh, proof of concept on how some of these spaces can relate. 
Uh, and so we brought tonight uh, a couple options for uh, one story and two story layouts, which begin to suggest an architectural approach and a way of thinking about the uh, the plan and the way that spaces relate to each other. But you know, this is this is a, a sightless test fit, and so a lot of the a lot of the uh, a lot of elements that drive how the uh, uh, program is laid out have to do with how it's landing on site. These, these, some of these test bits are really trying to understand more what a footprint of a, of, of a two-story versus a single-story building will be. And that's really driving towards looking at, at, at the sites. And then things will change further in terms of the square footage, um, especially relating to the, the circulation as we start looking at how these buildings are situated, uh, how this building is situated on the various sites. So look at the prototype of floor plans for a single-story building. Um, again, you know, this is a kind of a proof of concept, trying to organize some of our thinking about this. But just to talk about it generally, you know, a, a strong element that we've talked about quite a bit is, is having a, a generous lobby that serves as a, a meeting place that really can kind of organize uh, and, and structure the way that um, uh, residents and members of, of the community center and, and, and recreational component uh, are visiting it. And so, you know, we're, we're very much using this as a way to uh, to draw people in and provide an opportunity for a potential program within it, but then also using that the depth of it as a way to uh, maybe make a distinction uh, between or a filtering mechanism between the, the kind of paid portion, the membership portion versus the community portion, uh, either, and that's either a kind of front to back or left to right organization between that and, you know, not that there would necessarily be turnstiles, but you know, uh, in this situation for option one, you can see where the the, the floor uh, footprint is is uh, less than our grossing factor, uh, our, our program plus grossing factor. Uh, after coming in, you know, there's a expansive lobby and most of the community service and the the community service offices, but also the community programming uh, opens right out onto the lobby. You know, maybe some visibility into the gym would be great, and then with the community uh, services offices really uh, being in a way the, the back of house for the uh, entry and membership desk. And then members could filter back in to, uh, to go to the lockers and the pool and for uh, uh, the specialty uh, exercise, yoga room, uh, uh, bar, et cetera, cardio weights in the gym. Uh, and then a, really a similar uh, more, uh, so if, if if option one was maybe a little long, longer and, and uh, had a kind of narrower aspect ratio, uh, option two is a little square, just anticipating that sites might have different constraints, uh, but a really a similar idea where the, the lobby is maybe a little broader and, and but not quite as deep. Uh, and again, trying to, sorry? No, we didn't say anything. Okay, sorry, I thought there was a question. Um, I do but, have a question, Keith. Oh, sorry, Gwen, did you have something? A good time. Where's the walking slash running track in this? these two plans? Is it yeah. around the, outside the gym? Yeah, so, you know, that that could, that's a, a topic worth talking about. So in, in either of these, it would be suspended above the gym. Okay. Um, but there could be an opportunity if we made the baselines and the out of bounds a little wider, it could happen on a single story, you know, outside of the of the gym, you could do, um, you know, fabric curtains or something to make sure that people aren't getting hit with with balls and, and what have you. But, you know, so we've been, you know, just penciling in the idea that there's going to be you know, some program or some some push a space for an elevator and stairs uh, to get up there. Um, you know, that that obviously it it has to be accessible. And so it will need to have a accessible means of egress, uh, you know, two sets of stairs and an elevator to get up to that second story, even if it's a single story building. Um, and so, you, you know, there's there's that, but then you could also look at options where it happens outside of the playing surfaces of the gym uh, gym floor. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so that's just like one thing that, you know, you, you, you can't avoid having the second story if you're trying to have the elevated track, unfortunately. Yeah. And that was a question I had was the elevated viewing for the swim, for the pool, because I know for competitions that's preferred Popular. to be elevated. Yeah, you know, I think on the single story one, you know, whether or not we have these in the kind of the right orientation or what you see, um, you, you know, it, it might be something that's uh, elevated, you know, stepped aisles and bleachers that go up, but you know, start at the pool deck and and go up from there, uh, as opposed to being elevated, you know, up up um, on a second story. 
Um, but we could we could look at it maybe in in one of these versions, uh, the single story versions. If we're including an elevator, if we're including stairs for the elevator track, you know, something to consider having elevated seating, uh, regardless, even if it is like a one story building, that component might might want to happen on the second story. I think this is probably a, a good time to. Like so, so if I could, if I might, um, it's a good time to jump in and just emphasize that these aren't designs yet. They're really just uh, taking the building program that we've been developing over these last several months with all of you and thinking about it in a different way, uh, but not to suggest that anything is set in stone. This is really sim simply just a diagram and in no way, you know, reflective of a design, but trying to think about uh, what are some of the sequence and uh, what spaces are next to each other, the adjacencies of those spaces and what what could work and what doesn't work. But really what the reason why we're doing this is to get a better handle on a very uh, generic footprint of the building in different configurations so that as we start to look at sites, we can understand a little bit better if a site is going to be suitable right off the bat or not. Thanks, Brad. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. I, I guess my questions are, are kind of like, yeah, what would be the buffers between some of these spaces in terms of hallways or get, you know, getting from the lobby to the pool without having to cross? I, I know this is a very conceptual layout and not the actual design. Um, just kind of curious as to how the flow is going to going to work with all of it, um, and if that's going to be factored in at a later time, which would expand the square foot number of it um since these are all kind of just boxed up against one another and not necessarily um the actual end layout and then additional question would just be um inclusion of some some storage space off the off the uh big uh the field house and uh yeah it's hard to tell if there are cardio and weights on the second floor looking overlooking everything at the track level and you know, is there storage underneath that or um, kind of where does that fall into the, the equation? Mm -hmm. it, it, yeah, I mean, we're, we'll be trying to build that. Yeah, there there will be some changing and, and, and some adjustment as we really get serious about, you know, circulation. But also, like I said, when it, when you approach the site, we, we might have to be shifting, you know, volumes and that might, you know, expand or contract, uh, to contract that. You know, some, some ideas we were looking at is, you, you know, avoiding some of the Duplicative uh, circulation by having the 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 cardio and weights and the yoga really kind of uh, come off of the gym, and so like one way would be to kind of have an have an entry and then using the, the sideline and baseline of the gym as a way to access uh, the cardio and the weights, and then there might be some more of a fluidity between those spaces that could open up for like extra big classes and things like that. So those are some of the ideas we're starting to kind of test out some proximities, but uh, really not the circulation itself. Um, Uh, Tom, uh, just a question on the the uh, the summary on the building update program talks about a gross building of eighty six thousand square feet, whereas the one floor options are looking at seventy. Uh, are there elements that are not that are included in the program that's not including, or is that the efficiency of the the building? We're we're tracking close to the um, sizes that are in the program, but it just has to do with um, you know the the proximity and the and the grossing factor of of, of hallways and back of house, et cetera. You know, I mean, so the the gym, you know, we weren't we weren't carrying twenty percent additional circulation per the uh, you know, the size of the gym, which I, I, I sorry I don't remember exactly remember. I think it's you know, fifty or twenty thousand. Uh, square feet um you know we were carrying a, a smaller number but you know depending on the layout you know we're we're trying to be uh, efficient and there's not a hallway surrounding the, the whole gym to get up to that 15 percent grossing factor that we were carrying so you know i think it's a, a little bit of the layout some some circulation disappears but we also fatten the lobby a little bit um so we're it's it's mostly being absorbed through that i think i think a different way of looking at this is these diagrams and also the ones on the next slide are about as efficient as it's going to get. Um, and the program document is probably 
the uh, a kind of conservative ass assessment of the program with the gross square footage uh, in isolation. So once the, these buildings start get, getting applied to a site, it's not going to fit very neatly into the long rectangle or the squarish shape that we showed on the earlier slide. It's going to become a little more, you know, there might be some twists and turns to fit on the site. There might be a little bit more hallways or corridor circulation space to get to the different elements. And so that number will grow. So maybe a way to think about it, if Keith, if you back up one slide, is that in a, a good range is a, the kind of 70,000 to the 80 plus thousand square feet that we are showing in the program. Um, and then as we get into the specific uh, sites, that that's kind of the range that we're going to land into. It, it just seems to me that the two-story option takes advantage of, of uh, the vertical nature of this second floor gives you within this within a smaller footprint, which may be critical when we start looking at sites that uh, that are space constrained. So I just uh, to me the two story of of the options that are shown here, the, the two story makes more sense to me. Mm -hmm. I also yeah I also appreciate that the two story just based on one of our site visits and the the integration of the cardio weights with the track space as opposed to at the at the gym floor level. I feel like that's a little bit more of an invasion on the users of the gym when they're just looking out on the people playing or trying to recreate in the gym. It just it, I, I would feel vulnerable having the whole <laughs> having the whole free course cardio and weights just yeah, yeah. just watching me shoot <laughs> free throws or you know play football. <laughs> so I'd rather I, 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 yeah, I'd, I'd kind of rather have that up on a on an upper level connected to the track and and being able to use the track as part of your workout. Um, mm -hmm. And I do yeah, and and the and the, the two story does yeah, it does accomplish the the small footprint that you may be constrained to. Um, you know, getting a little bit more uh, space storage underneath and, and all that stuff. And then that seemed to use that as the elevation for your pool too. That pool spectator space was tied to that gym yeah. space, that, except for the tight sideline of the gym, that there was a lot of space at the track, but having it up mm -hmm. above, they really used that space well. And I think the yeah. two-story lead, leads to a lot, gives the consultants a lot more creativity when they're talking about, because we were last meeting, we were debating between a, a single or two kind of cardio rooms or, you know, expanded fitness room. And I forget who it was, we brought up a good point where, you know, another 10 feet in each corner allows for pieces of equipment where I can go in the corner and stretch and work out, yet I'm not in the middle of 30 people in a fitness room. It just still right. allows people of different confidence levels to work in different space without really increasing the square footage or the cost. So, plus, I think that we all agreed that on our tours, anyways. We really appreciate the elevated viewing for swimming yeah. um and um uh, i'll just i'll put it there every facility i've ever visited that had a walking track on the ground levels integrated into the gym floor every every facility manager i've ever talked to said please don't do it because if you don't run the curtain and you're walking and then it's it's kind of that multi-purpose is multi-conflict so yeah i would definitely um you don't have to shut one thing down to do another so um anyways just Thoughts there from our visit. So, I think those are all great comments. And a couple other things that we just have in mind as we've been developing this internally is you're right that the the two story option results in a smaller footprint, so that potentially opens up more possibilities for sites. We've also been thinking about as we plan these big picture blocks that there might be a version where the leisure pool goes away or the third gym goes away as we've been talking about all along, whether it's for capital cost reasons or operations or particular site areas. But we wanna make sure that as we arrange these building blocks on a site that it gives you that flexibility to expand or contract program throughout the study, depending on the feedback that we get and you know some of the more information that gets folded into it. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. As I mentioned, you know, like if you're trying to do an elevator walkway, you're kind of it, it you've already purchased two stairs and an elevator. And so, you know, mobile mm -hmm. mobilizing that to be more useful space up there is makes a lot of sense. So just, you know, uh, uh, some general ways that we uh, were thinking about the, the kind of party, as we call it, um, you know, looking at the ground floor as just because it's the big program that's that's based on the ground floor, having kind of a, a, a big 
uh, lobby with a with potentially a double height space and a big stair that kind of leads you up to the second floor. But everything kind of on the ground floor is is really uh, kind of behind the paywall or however you want to put it for for member paying members. And then as you go up that kind of the generous stairs, uh, the big span of a of a lobby that organizes the community uh, program on the second floor, the community services offices up there, um, the, the community rooms, the multi user WCs, um, the game room at the far end. That also, you know, creates that's an opportunity to have you know some visibility across if this is on the on the campus, some some views that look out onto the site, um, and, and then you know on the second floor. Uh, uh, elevated seating for looking over the, the competition pool and the opportunity to maybe find some, steal some space, uh, depending on how the, the space on the second floor layout for more like a, a, a niche within the, off of the walking track where there can be that relationship between the cardio weights and, and, and the walking, if that's a part of your workout routine. Um, so this is a nice clean way to kind of break up those two portions, but also not, not make it seem like there's a, one is getting you know short trip or uh, that you know and really kind of taking the community portion almost having that, that second kind of sky lobby where everything is off of, built around there it, it feels like that's one kind of co cohesive and interrelated uh unit up there um um and then just talking about parking a little bit um you know th this is this is there's a big asterisk around this this is a big building on uh a, a, that that's over. I don't have sorry the the numbers in front of me, but looking into the zoning ordinance, you know, project this size is generally going to have uh, considerable interaction with the planning uh, the planning board and planning staff, and and so once you get to a certain size uh, and an importance like this, a municipal building, um, you know, parking counts often are uh, are a form of negotiation, uh, trying to uh, do you know traffic study, but also find out use study, find out how many. Uh, stalls are really needed. You know, we we took a stab at looking at a, a really kind of strict down the line, um, similar program that's in the parking or uh, in the zoning ordinance. It tells you, you know, if you have an office, you know, X many spaces per square foot, or you know, if you've got a uh, you know a, a gym, you know, there's no community center uh, segment of the of the zoning ordinance. So it's really kind of trying to take a, a, a maximalist approach of saying like. What are similar sizes, and we get a really kind of absurdly large uh, 294 parking stalls required, which you know is that's like the size of the Hannaford, that's like near the hub. So it's it's just there's no way it's going to be that big, but that would be like you know one way of looking at it. If you look at the Booth Bay YMCA, which is 58,000 square feet, so you know about 75 percent the size of, of maybe more the the project that that we're looking at. Um, you know they have 113 uh, parking stalls, um, and then looking at other uh, Parking areas just to give you a sense of how big that is. If you don't remember the Booth Bay, you know, so the the, the school lot um, at the point of the Gorham Road, um, that's about 100, 100 spots. Mm -hmm. That's right behind the Sunoco, and then the Wentworth uh, school lot, you know, is, is also like you know pretty big. And you know, I was there yesterday, and that that's that's a huge parking lot. Um, and then part of the negotiation is not only finding getting you know, the right size, the number of parking stalls for the program. But also um, because a lot of the lots on like on the campus uh, or other places that we're looking uh, might have complementary schedules, you know, having some kind of uh, memorandum of understanding or agreement with some of the uh, whoever the neighbors is like neighbor is uh, to be able to to uh, borrow some of the parking or have a, a combo use lot that's like really fairly fairly typical. And so that's kind of figure into that's going to figure in, I'm sure, for whichever site is selected. So you guys, one of the things that Keith had asked me about, especially if something is is a choice on campus, is looking at what a kind of calculating what an estimated daytime, like from opening to like four o'clock circulation would be in the building. Um, because if it's on campus, we have a multitude of parking lots that are adjacent to some of the choices that are going to get evaluated. And then once schools close, most of the times those parking lots are empty. And so What's that? Your planning board, like they have parking requirements for buildings. Okay. You can you can steal from other locations. Well, I think that's what that's what he was <laughs> looking at. I'm only on it for a year, so yeah. I don't know. Well, yeah, we would have to we'd have to evaluate what the use is. And again, I don't think anybody in town wants to see massive parking lots, and so I think they'd be open to complimentary parking if it made sense. Um, and mm -hmm. it was a selection of sites, so just something to think about. And then I can reach out to planning too, just to kind of start running those questions. 
up the flagpole through the process. So thanks, Keith. Todd, Todd's going to facilitate, you know, a, a bigger discussion about that. I know it's that there's some question whether or not it's a major development. Uh, you know, not a few of the sites are kind of meet that requirement, but th there is an encouragement within the uh, within the kind of major development language uh, in the zoning ordinance that they'd like to encourage, you know, a, a you know a more innovative solution to parking that's not just building, you know, like according to the strict parking minimums. So hopefully that extends to this kind of project too. So that's that's kind of the, one of the next piece that uh, Todd's going to help us uh, dig into at the at the staff level. And then uh, th that brings us to kind of the site evaluation matrix. So we can go through this uh, quickly, and then so this is uh, or, sorry not quick. We can go through this as the next step. Um, we we took a a quick stab at kind of. Providing some waiting for some of these, but I think this is uh, this is a time that I think uh, we should uh, we're looking for feedback on uh, how we judge each of these categories. Uh, some they shouldn't all be weighted the same because certain things you know we we're providing some negative numbers versus you know one two three four, and then some are, are weighted considerably more. Um, so these are the categories that the these uh, seven categories that we uh, anticipate uh, having members of the committee. Uh, look at the sites that we're going to talk about in a moment and try to provide, you know, a scoring for each of these and then a cumulative score. And we can, we can take all these and, and, and try to find a, and, and reach a, the total number for, uh, for each site. Um, going from left to right, the program test pit, obviously this seems most important to us. If you can't get the program on the site, then you've got a big problem. So that's why we've got some, uh, some, some waiting there. So zero, the site can't support the program without considerable adjustment. So that, that adjustment might be, you know, growing vertical or, 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 or losing program if it doesn't fit at all. So the site can accommodate the important piece of the program, including interior spaces, exterior spaces, uh, and parking. Um, yes. And then uh, second one, optimal and effective use of site. So existing buildings on site, site that are suited for other uses or confirms conforms to the, the town growth plan. You know, there, there's certainly none of the sites that we're looking at are, are empty by any means. And so whether or not this is kind of a, in some ways the highest best use uh, of, of the of the building site uh, is, is also pretty important. Uh, geographic location, whether it's uh, close to the residential population, is it near potential, um, you know, centers of of you know offices office parks uh people who may you know be inclined to become members of the recreation side and use it during uh during a lunch break um that might be uh you know a, a highlight of the geographic or is it near a um you know transportation uh whether it's car or whether it's well served by multimodal mobile forms which is obviously very important you know, walk and bike and bus anything along you know route one is certainly uh, going to be pretty well served um adjacencies uh, the adjacent users uh, uses are, are likely to add to the center's success. So again, it, it, that's uh, fairly self-explanatory. But you know, is it are the adjacent uses unrelated and not corresponding? Can you see them, you know, working together, or they have really you know complementary uses and 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 the the time and occupation of those uh, uses uh, really could could work well and feed off its other uh, off each other. Uh, and then some of the site conditions and challenges. Uh, you know, several of the sites have wetland uh, components, so that's obviously uh, complicates things. Uh, and then versus if it's just a flat and cleared sites site, so we have kind of a mix of those, and we'll look at them in just a moment. And then cost of land and acquisition and ownership. Uh, everything we're going to look at is actually owned by the town, um, but it's it's worth um, looking at it. Does it? Does it conflict with you know future uses? I mean, are, could we imagine that uh, certain areas might be want to be designated for future school expansion or something else or or some other type of use uh, within the community? And then special permits and approvals. Um, our initial research didn't find uh, a, a lot of the overlay districts uh, figuring into this. Um, so, uh, but I think that bears a little more uh, review. Um, so I think it's it's worth looking at uh, at these categories, and uh, I guess I want to just open up to the group to see if if there's uh, if there's further or greater weight that we should give to any of these. Like, is it you know just geographic no location deserve the kind of the, the weighting of the of the program test test bed, or or are there any categories that um, 
seem to be less important or shouldn't be weighted at all. I just, uh, thank you. Which is kind of between three and four. Geographication adjacencies. If you don't build this in access of the schools, it's a different building programmably than what we're talking about. If you have to bus kids to someplace further away versus walking after school, it is a different building than having, you know, three to five, three to six o'clock programs where kids can walk after school. So your building takes a different shape based on I think that factor. My as far opinion. as functioning goes, functioning, yeah. So, I mean, we've got we've talked about intramural high school sports, middle school sports, dance. Yeah. All these things happen. You can get there, walk after school. If you have to bus or get tra transportation, reality, those programs move back to five, six o'clock, and parents can do it. It's a big difference in what you can do. So, I think that geographic location or adjacencies to this main complex of schools holds a lot of weight in what you can do, and maybe even the size of the building you need. You know, I mean, if you've got the pool, but it's on the other side of town, and kids can't get there to practice, you now have to transport them or get them there. There's a big difference in the school's use of the pool versus a club or an individual, which can go anywhere. So just those things, the on-campus, off-campus, or coming up with secondary plans of we got to bus kids every day is a different, it's just a huge factor to what this building could be or, or should be. I just, that's kind of, the way I see, we've already heard about the library giving out basketballs and all these things happen right here. They don't happen at Black Point. They don't happen all on 14 on the other end. Um, it just, I think that's a huge weighted factor to what size of building program you need based on that that major piece. Teen um, center they can't get to because they can't drive there. So do you think the it's different is it's just gonna weight it way different than they so can? So having the adjacency in the geographic location column, really, if you if you hit both things that you've talked about, it's in the center of town and a successful yeah. school, it would rank as eight right off the get-go. Is that a high enough value? Because it's hitting both of them. You're getting eight for really location versus the other the other pieces. Um and the other pieces might weigh out. I'm just saying like Maybe you don't need as much, you know, the, the teen space is going to be a lot smaller if you put it way down on one end of town or the other end of town versus where right. they can walk after school. Yeah, no, that's a good point. So, but I guess my question is, do you think looking at the scoring, you know, the big ones here are obviously if it can fit on a site, and I think that's why they haven't ranked as six. I mean, that's the highest. If it can't fit, it doesn't matter, right, on mm -hmm. a site. And then every other category, owned by the town, wetlands, challenges, uh, site condition challenges, I don't think any of those – offset geographic location and adjacency just running through the numbers quick in my head if you if you took any just let's just, not to skip ahead keith but if we any one of those sites when we go to talk about them in a minute you know what i mean does it fit uh is a suit of redevelopment well located i mean you're already at if you hit fours you know six ten you know 18 points if you hit those three things i mean that i think it's a pretty high weight on a parcel the wetlands are expensive though so, and I think well, that's, that's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. And so part of the wetland conversation I've been having with with um my understanding, I could be wrong in my understanding, just so you everybody's educated on the same thing. This town has bought or paid for wetlands as much as they can on this campus. So if there was wetland impact, we'd be looking at offsetting with property use. So it's like one acre, 10 acres, you've got to come up with in a non-buildable. And so that's part of the process with the open space plan is we have a lot of acres that are undesignated. So we could use land we already have, put it into conservation and offset some of these wetland pieces. So that's part of the, that's what I brought when we started talking about the open space plan to be able to get those donations to maybe help offset the cost of this project if we had to get a, an approval. What I shared also with engineering is that once you guys go through and if there's a if there's a parcel that really speaks to you and there's wetlands, we'd often have to vet it through a lot of channels before we wasted a lot of time on something. Mm -hmm. Bring it to the right, bring it to Army Corps of Engineer and all those type of things before we get too far down a rabbit hole. That's why, again, the theory from you guys, which I appreciate, was let's look at what we own on campus. That's what we're going to look at. And then if those fit, great. We can run and do some fact-finding and, and confirmation on certain challenges. And if they don't, 
then that means we're looking at a private piece of property uh, or something else that we own outside of our, our hope, which then location and uh, adjacency drops. So based on the goals you set. The, the building might end up somewhere else. It's just I think programmably, if we're looking at hey, right. that size building with what we've been talking about, if you put that way down by soccer all the way over there, it's just going to be a different building because mm -hmm. you won't have that need. Yeah. Um, so that's why I think if we're looking at exactly what we've been talking about, it weighs much higher. Yeah. If you start talking about costs and other things, it could fluctuate that a little bit. But yeah. okay. um, just those two stood out to me as what we've talked about, that's the most important part. What we end up with might be somewhere else, and it doesn't pull a bunch of weight, but yeah, it does seem, yeah, I mean, it does seem like well located, should probably be higher than no known special requirements, mm -hmm. right? I mean, at the end, it'll seem to can be, tell you to put it in the tip district, but I mean, I mean, well located to me is like three times more. <laughs> more and again, these are like your, this is what this is what UTL came up with as kind of a starting point for your conversation. Yeah. I think you guys can offer rank. I mean, again, this is your process. They're giving us guidance and framework. So if there's certain things you want to lower or higher before you start looking, then please, this is your opportunity. This is just a conversation starter. So we're here to take notes and listen and you know uh, follow your lead on what should be ranked higher versus lower. Hey, this is Patrick. I, I totally agree with the what the comments that were made about the location. Uh, that that to me is the probably Obviously, besides, can it fit on the site? Maybe that's the most important thing to me. Uh -huh. I agree. Location is critical. Mm -hmm. Any other Anything other thing I'll throw out there? Oops, sorry. Sorry, go ahead, Brett. No, go ahead, Brett. No, I was just going to say the other thing to throw out there is if you know, this following the thread of the conversation about the geographic location impacting what's in the building and how big it is, that also obviously impacts the financial and operational model that we've been developing and, you know, how fiscally independent this community center can be relative to a smaller version of it. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that pops off the page that you guys want to? Consider upping. No, it's just like the cost of land ownership one. None of these apply to that. That one might jump a lot more if we see at least four out. You know, that, that would just, it holds no weight right now if we're only looking at these properties. Right. And you're saying that, that we may, if we look at a private parcel, then that probably jumps back. We might need to change. That might be a higher priority. Be, yeah. Look, millions and millions to buy a property. That's yeah, going to no, be a way different like, cross than. Right. Zero or mitigation or whatever it is. Right. Because when you look at the cost of a site, if you had to purchase something, something may cost more, but it would score less on a higher on um, special permits or wetland. You know, those things would value out in that end. So well, that's a good point. I think one thing that the last two categories have in common is that they impact the speed of delivering this project once the town goes through the motions. And if this actually, you know, continues out the other end uh, with a vote and a, 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 a you know, moving forward with the project. Uh, acquiring private land obviously adds a whole level of complication and timeline to the process if there are uh, taking away parkland, for example, and transferring it to a different use if there are, you know, regulatory issues and hurdles to overcome associated with that, that adds time. And what we haven't really had a conversation about is, is that important? Um, and should we, for those last two categories, actually try to look at those more as negatives? If uh, acquiring private land, instead of scoring as a one point or even a zero point, should it be minus two points uh, in the way that we've scored having challenging topography or wetlands because that's going to impact construction costs? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unless it hits location, adjacency, yeah, yeah I, I wasn't thinking that way when I first read this, but I think, I think Dennis is hitting on something that, you know, if, if the location piece and adjacency, if we're looking at something on campus versus something outside of campus, this may look like a different score, you know, mm -hmm. different. We may have to come back and reweight this um, to, re to really paint a picture of what the value of a selected parcel would be. And there could be private land 
it's it hits those two things, it weights it much higher than the cost jumps in. Right. Then the other one comes up and, and one comes down. And one's going this way and that yeah, way. That's a good point. Yeah, you could overcome location adjacencies on private property, but you just have to weigh that into your right. yep. size, space, scope, building, yep. or cost up front. I just don't know how to change those and, you know. Okay. So sort to of give them some direction, are you thinking like in this based on the parcels that we're going to initially evaluate and eliminate? Do you think you know just right now with the geographic and adjacency knocking those up to five? I mean, what's your? They're going to be higher. I don't think you're going to know until you take the exercise of going through the numbers. Right. I mean, it's like you say, if if site number whatever, the first three you've got, uh, you've already, or the first four, you've already got 18 points. Uh, nobody else is, no other site is going to, unless sure. the second site can match all of those uh, together. I, I think that matrix right there works for the four sites under consideration. It may not be appropriate if there are another stable of sites that have other aspects to it. Right. And then you could change the matrix. But right yeah. now, I don't know how you could open it up to anything yeah. Tom, or would, everything. Would it make sense to set a cost land ownership right now for this first portion be more like replacing what? Does that make sense? Like, if you go to Memorial Park, you got to replace that. Right. It's a bigger factor than ownership. We own it. Yeah. So it's more like, what's the cost to replace what we have? Is it tennis courts, ice rink, right. maintenance building? It's almost like to put it there, we lose what? And that should be the factor more than, because the cost, maybe that's the cost we go at it. The cost is, hey, we got to replace the maintenance facility right. at the rink and the rink where we have to, where we don't have to replace the rink. But, so maybe the cost of land ownership of this isn't by the land, it's replacing what's there now. Right. Right. What amenities do we have for like, we have to, And where do we find that spot? Do we have to buy that lot to, right. to make that happen? Or is there a, yeah. you know, can you move that to a different one of these parcels? Yeah. And what does, does that, that make sense, Brett and Keith, from, for this? One yeah, I think, I think stuff? absolutely. I think it's a, a category that looks at displacing what's already there. And yeah. obviously, yeah. if there's nothing that's displaced, that scores highly. If there's a, a cost in, associated with replacing something that is displaced and that would score lower. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. Okay. So for that exercise, I think the numbers are fine. Yeah. Glenn, Patrick, I, I'm trouble flipping through you guys. Any comments from you guys online? Well, my initial thought is, um, are we making this harder than it has to be? Are we talking about, I mean, we, we have four sites. Are we not going to evaluate those? tonight or are, are we still just talking about what the scale is going to be because it doesn't seem like it should be that hard yeah we just want to make sure we have a process so if we're asked why or what we we have the backup to say this is why it was uh, done if we can get to traditionally scoring tonight then we can have that conversation i think we're on track to have some preliminary discussions based on the agenda lineup so um again it's more about us establishing a matrix so if we were asked we can say these are the factors this is why um in the process so. well to speak on what dennis was talking about i look at the optimal and effective use of the site and that's where i consider oh we have to we you know the optimal use is we have to now move tennis courts so that would score i would think a lower score because we're dealing with that or at least identify though is there other parcel to do that right mm -hmm. you know we might find out that we can replace those right over there, and yeah. it's not a big deal, but right. it moves it further away from what use yeah. high school teams. Or well, I think they're all good comments. Yeah, I would almost approach it like eliminating the bad sites first. I don't think we need to go through an exercise of scoring things that are obviously not going to work, um, either because they're in the wrong location or there's a wetland issue or whatever. Yeah, I agree. If they're just too small, it's not. And 
you guys can tell us if they're not going to fit. Well, remember how many school, how many sites the school evaluated. So I think it's also maybe a quick, nice exercise for us to run through quickly. Maybe just doing quick scores to just say one, 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 moving on. Just to say we officially evaluated yeah. all of these. Patrick, you're going to say something? No, just just to say that I think we need to have some type of. I mean, we've all. I mean, a lot of us have been through this process on multiple different projects over our lives, and and it's always good to have kind of a, a baseline criteria by which you rank all of the different sites. You obviously don't want to consider sites that are just not even feasible at all, like tearing down a building that is being used currently in a in a useful purpose. You know, things like that or a site that is just grossly too small. But you have to have some type of a, you know, beginning point criteria, and that's what that's what we're talking about here. This isn't going to be a laborious process for those of you who kind of just want to move forward. And I will share just a little bit of back when we look at the sites. From my end, as an apartment site, things that we're looking at doing in the near future um, are just it'll consider and it'll score out, but we are already considering having to expand or relocate our parks building um, because it's we've just outgrown it when it was built way back when. Um, and um, we are looking to eliminate in this budget, fill in the ice rinks and buy portable kits. Like you see, they've got some, um, because it's just with the weather we're having right now, we can't keep eight inches of water going, but if you bought a, a nice rink kit, you know what I mean? You can keep five or six inches of water more consistently, and then that can be moved in any location. Um, and so those are things, at least on that one site, when you get the consideration piece, um, as far as just that facility goes. Um, so those are future things, future that will need to happen in the next, um, you know, sooner than later. I think this has been a helpful conversation just to be able to talk about the categories and where uh, committee members are seeing the priorities. So we will take another pass at adjusting this, maybe add a category um, and adjust the numbers. But we do have a little more that we want to get to before we call it a night. Yep. So moving on to the, the four sites that, that Todd uh, supplied us with, just to give you a quick review. Sorry, I, I don't quite get all the images from my uh, rainy walk around uh, yesterday. Um, but uh, when I distribute the deck after this with the updated numbers, there'll be more in there. But you know, hopefully uh, there's some immediate familiarity with, with pretty more or less most of these because three are on the on municipal campus. So uh, the, the first is uh, at Memorial Field, which is next to the uh, Memorial Oval. Um, this uh, is is an interesting site. It's uh, I tried to provide a little more context. Well, you can see that it's it's right uh you know backing up against the municipal campus, uh, backside of town hall and uh, the fire department and public safety. Uh, it's adjacent to uh, all the parking for the Scarborough High School, um, and you know we were pretty close to to Route One, maybe a slight, you know near the high school, the more distant to Wentworth School, Middle School. Um, this is you're know, predominantly flat at the field, obviously, but there's a taper from the skate skate park, which is I'd say maybe close to a story higher over here, and then uh, during a drive, uh, really kind of tapers down, and then uh, the parking lot uh, to to come to the, the oval is uh, considerably lower. So this is a view from uh, from the far side, taken over uh, near the pickleball courts, and you can see that's rising up, and then in in the distance is uh, maybe at this point you're maybe twenty something feet higher. Um, at, at the far end. Um, this has a portion of wetland that's next to it. Uh, there's some on the GIS wetland here, but this is really more like a um, a rain garden. And so we'll need to talk to the staff on whether or not the same restrictions apply, but there's also a considerable amount of um, up topography in this uh, in this triangle here. This uh, um, Yeah, that's part of the stormwater management from the public safety building that was built. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. You know, versus the wetland here, this is definitely a kind of low-lying, you know, paper birch, uh, cattail uh, wetland. Um, worth mentioning, and this is going to be a discussion we'll have uh, with the, uh, sorry, I don't recall the name of the of the committee, but the conservation uh, wing of, of the town. Um, 
right now all the wetland buffers are 25 feet, but there's a draft uh, change to that where it, it kind of oscillates given the size of a contiguous uh, wetland. So right now it'd be uh, you know 25 for under a thousand square feet to uh, bumps up to 50 feet between um, 1,000 and 10,000 square feet above above 10,000 feet. You're talking more like a 75 or 100 foot buffer. And so that will that we're we're playing a little conservative here, looking at what we anticipate uh, by the time this gets built, the the buffers will be. And so you can see where uh, e even though some of the existing uh, portions like the skate park are, are already within the wetland buffer, um, uh, those those might change if we're improving the site or or changing it. Um, so that's just worth considering and keeping in the back of your uh, of your mind. Um, and and to that end, you know, we try to look at the kind of buildable envelope. Uh, after you look at the at the taking out the, the wetland, so if you recall, you know the the building footprints range between your fifty six thousand square feet up to let's say eighty thousand to eighty six thousand square feet. Uh, so, you know, looking at just purely the building footprint, pretty comfortable on this site. Plus, uh, backfilling it with uh, with parking and approach and uh, ADA parking uh, and plaza out front, um, and then worth worth considering. Um, the opportunities for uh, for for parking uh, next to the uh, the high school and then potentially the uh, town hall, uh, you know, certainly on the weekends. I imagine this lot this lot is actually pretty full during the week uh, of all the people working in town hall, but potentially during the the weekends it might be a different story. Um, you know, just worth mentioning because of the change in grade, uh, the view from the kind of uh, skate park back up to the hill. There's a another big change in grade that goes up to Route One, and so there's some retaining walls, and you're definitely kind of looking at the back of the public safety building and town hall. Um, but that, that there's a, maybe an opportunity to kind of change the orientation of some of the buildings, uh, and they might find an opportunity to maybe build up um, with future additions uh, and have that have the address be more towards the site. That just so everybody's in reference, that skate park area that's elevated. It's just under 15,000 square feet of elevation because that skate pad is 120 by 120. So if you were if you were to extract that elevated piece from that footprint, that's about what it would take away from that number, just for reference. And I won't I won't a term with it, but just to the left of that are two tennis courts and a public bathroom where if you had a community center, you might not need the public bathroom in that spot, and you could possibly. Yeah, it goes to a parking lot right there. So, you, you know, that you could expand that and do something with those. And if you could replace those or something, it was not true to go right into that parking area for the, because you'd have to be parking, you know, like somewhere in this facility. So there's there's other pieces just off the edge of that that yes, might be incorporated. Yeah. And there's already not enough parking in the park. Yeah, it's, a, it's a tiny lot. But, you know, you've got that, if you take out the bathroom and if you were to, have two tennis courts move somewhere else. Now you've got a little more land there, building the or whatever you kind of call it. Todd, Todd, would those fields have to be moved somewhere else? Yeah, and again, that's the ranking. That's a that's a field that the pretty much the high school uses exclusively. Uh, we don't have a lot of refuse on it. We don't have and so soccer. and and not to get into the weeds, but part of the master planning, we have some major field upgrades come, and so I think that's. If this was a site that was in consideration, that's why when I turned to my CIP, my capital improvement plan this year, I really only gave one solid year. And as over the next couple of months, I'll work two to five because there's some things when we go to do something, if we need to build, um, excuse me, build capacity or change surfaces, you either have to add it, put turf, or put lights. And so those 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 would be costs that have to be considered in a site selection. So. Um, but yeah, those are all would all be considerations, like you said, what what should make it away. So Todd, the, the grassed area that's to the left of the 156, the colored. Yep. Uh, that my impression that's not used. I mean, the Thursday night concerts is a few people out there and there's a few people with their dogs and throwing frisbee, but uh would those practice fields fit? If you move them to the left and and use that area, uh, we've been very reluctant. Again, anything is possible, but we've been very respective and reluctant to put anything inside. We call it Memorial Field or Memorial Park. The Memorial Park has hundreds of dedicated placards, and it's the only space in town that that we own that's not 
90% athletic based. And so we've been very, very deliberate, let's say, about not allowing athletic fields because that's the only place where you know you can show up any day of the week, fly a kite, chase a dog, play catch. Mm -hmm. You never have to worry about, oh, I got here and now there's a high school practice or they change the location. So, um, again, anything... you ask Tom Hall and he says, don't even talk about it. Yeah. Don't even think about it. It's, it's a pretty good sign that, that. that, that, that inside... That's why we only looked at this side because it's pretty sacred. And again, yeah. if this was a selection, it's a pretty good forefront to a building, you know, as far as you know, having a park, you talk about wellness and on. And I mean, it's a, yeah. it's, there's a lot of positives to it as far as just the visual and the aesthetics of the building. But I would be hard pressed to, to answer your question. I think there's other ways on campus that we can gain the bond because again, it's literally the high school of three to six. It's about three hours. You see that little path? So the things I was talking about to the, the tennis courts, the bathroom building, the parking lot, all outside of that path. Right. Yeah. You know, like I'm, yeah. If we have other parking that I was yeah. outside, not yeah, the parking lot. pickleball and the, the yeah. bathroom again. The pickleball and bathroom. Yeah. And the bathroom, like Sasha said, it's only used right. at times a year. Right. For yeah, no, there's definitely considerations when you yeah. talk about, for sure. They're so not much. touching the parts. Is it more to maintain a, a unprogrammed open space within a yeah. campus like that, just for community use, especially with an expanding a, expanding community itself, and and the lack of space that we're going to end up having all at the end, like that? That's a very valuable space to keep the way that it is. Yeah. Um, well, especially it might have, be enhanced by this. You got parking. Well, you more stop parking programming. Right. You have events and craft fairs and art festivals mm -hmm. and all those things, and you can walk right out. Right. That's, that's that's incredibly attractive to have that. Yeah, prices. The, the adjacency piece right there. Yeah. yeah. Sorry to take the direction. Go ahead. All right. Look at another site, actually uh, pretty close by, kind of on the other side of uh, of the track. Um, this was a challenging site, the municipal tennis courts. There's four tennis courts, and then there's two basketball courts uh, up at the backside. This is very challenging. It's mostly wetlands, um, you know, with a with a small portion that, um, uh, you know, 47,000 square foot area that you could potentially uh, develop, develop. But, you know, this, this you know, I don't want to say it's a, a non-starter, but it, it is and one one thing to mention about you know wetlands and, and remediation. Uh, depending on you know, there's the opportunity to to uh, pay into a wetlands bank, et cetera. But it's also not great land to develop. Uh, that's something to be concerned about. It's not like you get land that's you know perfectly pristine to start with, even if you were able to mediate you know, remediate it and 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 provide it somewhere else. You know, there are, there are challenges and site you know improvement challenges with uh, with with building on it. You know, not not great soils typically, and so just keep that in the back of your mind that. Uh, mm -hmm. if you if you push it too hard there's uh there's there's challenges involved um but you know the one great great thing about this is you know right by the wentworth uh school lot which is gigantic there's also a head in parking on two sides of the street on um on wentworth drive uh and then you know really good access accessibility from uh, Gorm Road, Gorm Road, but then also kind of turning it you know like turning turning inward towards the municipal campus uh, albeit some some more of the kind of uh, auto centric portions of it, um, and then you know that you, there would be uh, some of this program maybe evicted or or integrated into the building depending how you're uh, uh, evaluating it. But just following on the conversation earlier, if there's one site to eliminate because it doesn't fit the program, this is the one that doesn't fit the program. I feel like it's 2024. Yeah, no, we could have done something with that wetland spot. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's, and this site was put on there because I think I've been here almost seven years now, which is scary to me. But Terry Dewan and Associates did a site evaluation when you know, it was probably like two years before I got here. And they identified potential sites for community center. Ice rink was in the conversation, I think, that time, like eight years ago, and some school blogs. And so this was put on there because that was one of their identified sites. And so, but when you look at it now in 2024, the weather impact, so I mean, that's why we have to just look at Next. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then Black Point Park, uh, you know, there's no registered or at least according to GIS, um, 
wetlands here uh you know the one knock on it is it's uh if this is the municipal campus it's it's down on the other side of a portion of the marsh certainly a beautiful area it's very flat there's a, you know several existing flat practice fields there's a stand of trees you have 500,000 square feet available um there's a existing dirt parking lot here and then there's uh there's the church parking lot here again uh adjacent to it and this might be an opportunity to come to an uh an official agreement or understanding with that where you might have complementary uses and and that that could uh depending on the parking analysis maybe an opportunity to uh to not have to build just more uh built up parking parking areas and impervious surfaces I think this one is the worst location because it is off the beaten path and you're getting into the part of Scarborough where the people that I've talked to said they would continue going to Cape to swim because it's closer. Um, I don't think we need another pool that's that close to Cape. If we can get it closer to the center of town where the, where the kids can use it, the school can use it, that's just much better. This is by St. Max's, right? Yeah. St. Max. St. Max, St. Max. Max. Yeah. yeah. And, and I'll just say that the, what you don't see on here, the back of that corner is underwater all the time. Yeah, the dra is drainage. Yeah, there's drainage. Because we have just off the corner of that is Little League Field that when it rains, half the field, like literally the outfield and everything in between. Everything's a little flood. Little League Field. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Right. But I'm saying like it floods all the way back up. No. I know that's why the fields are always set that way to win the lot. So that's it doesn't say wetlands, but it is wet. Yeah. <laughs> but I agree. It's greatest, best space you could build on if it was here. It is. It's, it's just it's just out. Yep. So we can just be programmed with their perfect size, size and everything, but it is just not convenient. Yeah. And then um I, I get it. Quick get the uh, images in here. So this is an interesting. This is the ice rink site uh, that we we're talking about with the uh, the existing um, uh, maintenance shed that will probably be moving out. There's a, a a field for I believe for the for the Lumber School. There's some wet wetlands back here, um, and you'll look at the buffer uh, at the, a fair amount of of the site uh, would be available. You know, two hundred over two hundred thousand square feet uh, for. Uh, uh, for the building program, it tapers a little bit. It does back up against uh, uh, some mm -hmm. residential neighborhoods, but uh, this certainly is a is a unique opportunity. Uh, it's right near a, a lot of parking. Again, you know, a lot of it's busy on the other side of uh, of the of the one we're parking uh, lot from the site that we're looking at the tennis court site. So there's parking all the way along. I I should have counted the number of spots, but you know, if I had to guess, there's probably I don't know, 50, 60 spots. Uh, just head in parking, which I imagine is is probably predominantly for uh, game day uh, at the field. Uh, but then there's the the Wentworth parking lot uh, right right across the way, um, and then you know some other things. You know we we talked uh, not in depth, but we're mentioning that it would be uh, advantageous to have you know some kind of outdoor programming, some playgrounds, uh, some opportunities for that. You know that's actually kind of in in a way if if there's an understanding that they could be used on the weekend if that's open to the public. Uh, I think this is under construction, but there's a there's a pretty big uh, playground right outside of Wait, uh, Wentworth School uh, that that could serve that um, kind of really tie the whole uh, site together, you know, and, and you basically get that outdoor program for free for building the uh, the, the community building. It's, it's on your side. That's that's construction. That's that's the school thing. Right so this question is probably for Todd. Um, Site four um, and site yeah. one look yeah. like the best ones. Um, yeah. Todd, <laughs> Todd I'm sorry, say it again. I, I said, um, so I'm looking at, I'm sorry if you guys were talking there locally, I couldn't hear you. Um, if site four and site one down in Memorial Park are the, are the best options, um, from your perspective, um, would, which one of those would be better and would you have to move that um building on site four yeah so i mean we would definitely need to uh we would definitely need to move the building um but again we're we will be having conversations about whether we expand it or relocate it somewhere else uh, on campus when we get to that point of the discussion behind that building is the ice rink that we're talking about filling in and grading anyways just because of 
Um, we get 12 ice skating days by putting too many man hour resources into that project. So we're looking at mm. divesting from that and doing something else. And then that small field is not a full size field. It's probably a three quarter, maybe a middle school field that um, so probably that easily, you know, probably easily could be um, modified time into some of the, the other resources on campus um, as far as trying to create hours again with other you know, lights or turf. Uh, to get that kind of daybreak. So there's a lot of potential on this site. Um, I, yes, there is a school playground, so during the day um, it's not. But again, on weekends, it's pretty heavily populated by the community. Um, and again, this site is good, in my opinion, just because it has the um, adjacent parking. When you talk about larger events, um, I think the Memorial Park, um, excuse me, um, the Memorial Park um, site, I think is a more aesthetically pleasing site as far as just when you're talking about festivals and kind of atmosphere and yeah. being able to walk in and go outside and walk. It's got a lot of uh, what I would consider high value amenities on site that most centers when they're thinking about. Remember when we started this process, we talked about, you know, how big is the footprint, but then you're talking about adjoining community garden or a field, those things all grab acreage. The, the Memorial Park site gives you a lot of those things without having to purchase that acreage. So those are some positives there. Um, um, just on my initial thought, Gwen. Okay, thanks. Sure. Yeah, I think both of those sites are good and they're really close enough together that there's overflow parking available for both sites. Um, I do like the idea of having, um, you know, the fitness center the indoor fitness center next to the outdoor fitness center in Memorial mm -hmm. Park, which, you know, you have the best of both worlds there. Um, so, you know, either site really they're close enough together that it, um, they're accessible to the schools and everything. Any thoughts, Patrick? Sorry, I couldn't unmute. My thumb's too big. Um, I, I, I agree. I, I like. I probably like the this site for ice rink site more than the Memorial Park site. Just kind of off the cuff, um, Memorial Park. There's, there's never any parking there as it is, and it and it is a little bit of a pain in the butt to park all the way up to high school somewhere and walk down there. I just like the idea of that that big parking lot by Wentworth, which is hardly hardly ever full. I don't know, in my in my opinion, it's hardly ever full. Um, yes. But it, it seems like that, I like that site. It seems like it's a good mix of, of distance between the primary users of it. I mean, a closer distance to the primary users of it. I think there's gonna be more people from Wentworth and the middle school probably using this facility than maybe the high school or city hall, town hall. I, I, I don't know. I like, I like all the on, on site, on campus sites, except for maybe the tennis court one. Do other towns have a community center this large next to a school that large? It's very close. Oh, as far as like, as in I, you have a lot of suddenly a lot of, pedestrians just randomly walking next to a school and parking at a school parking lot in the middle of the day and where there's suddenly a lot more presence of non-school people yeah multiple I, hours and i mean i think everyone's driven through there during school hours and i mean if you want to get to class during a lot hours, of, you're to get there i shouldn't early. say a lot of but the facilities we looked at um you know bath facilities schools are across the street booth base high schools across the street wiscasa community center is up the hill i think that and again, if this was a site that was really being considered, I think there's two things that definitely need to be as part of that is looking at a pedestrian flow. You know, that road right there with the arrow A and then the arrow, that's an emergency access road out the back for the fire department that we we have a gate that we shut down and it used to run buses there. We finally get them to stop because our trucks were almost getting run over in the back and out of the garage. It was just nightmare. Um, and then this kind of crazy crisscross out front. We already know there's high traffic. So both of these sites, if they were considered, I think there would have to be some sort of traffic study. You know, are, would we have to develop a different, you know, there's no exit off the back of the middle school. Like how do we disperse traffic? So I think those would need to be considered in a final estimate when you get to that point. Um, and to Karen's point, 
I think that there's ways where like right now they use Wentworth Field um, and we'd have to figure out that space, what they do, they just go out and have recess, but they might be next to the tennis courts as an option, but all those gates could be locked during the day so people can't get over there. You know, just like they do now. Taking their recess field away. Yeah. So I yeah. don't have a little issue with that. Yeah, that's a big part of the community centers. I think is, is like a lot of community centers are built downtown. We don't have it. We don't have it downtown. Right. right. And they were built long enough ago that they had land. So, you know, we're really restricted on some of our municipal footprints and what we're looking at. So, you know, yes, the that parking lot, the morning traffic down because everyone drops off at Wentworth Middle School. In high school and that whole circle that's a nightmare yeah. but it can be figured out it should be fixed anyway probably it can probably be tied into this these two sites to me are the only two that like and the only thing with memorial is these are little fields that you can turn one spot create more fields and be done with it that's the high school so like that's a high school used all the time field but it's full size i don't know where we have spot to put i mean talk about no but yeah. to put another full-size soccer cross field somewhere that you can't get students to where this one's yeah. this one's for like it's a it's a small field it's for like kids that are like third fourth grade it would take it would take other investments because right now right. you'll see in the master plan one of the recommendations that, that yeah. the consultants made was flip-flopping the middle school fields so because the way the softball field is the baseball field right now is there's a vernal pool in left field you can't make that field any bigger on the on the softball field, which is on the left of the middle school, is that is 450 feet to left in the center. There's ample space to go into the woods there. And if you flip-flop those, you can get two full-size soccer fields, which we don't now with no impediment. So there are things that we're proposing now, anyways, that could complement some of these choices. If that's it, you know, again, I think once you start ranking and scoring them, you know, you'll start seeing some of those additional costs. Maybe eliminate one of these sites. I was shocked to think I didn't think this space was that big. When you see the 211, mm. I was like, no way. Like you look at Memorial, it's so big and wide. I was shocked, but obviously a lot of that is wooded. Right. So I don't know, you know, what that again, it might it's be not just cost fields. for excavation and trees right. and it's I a think lot the of sites, you know, will shake out there. I agree with you. Who owns that land? Which one? The 211,000 square feet. We own so it. the school has no rights to those fields, even though that's what we use for recess. Well, they have rights, but we own it. We own <laughs> technically every town owns the land the schools sit on. Correct. The school owns the building, and the town owns every piece of property. Because my question is, does the elementary school have they ever expressed the idea of expanding in that direction? From oh, as far as Wentworth School, yeah. Yeah, no, I've never, I mean, it doesn't mean there's not a consideration. I think once they continue down the school study, you know, there could be additions to both facilities. I think those will shake out in the next, hopefully, a few months um, if they can hold it so down. For this lot, you would have to find a new a new field for the Wentworth kids to play. Is that, that would be one of the factors? That would be one of the factors, yeah. And Todd, do you think where the, the upper half, the wooded area, abuts the residential is would there be a uh, concern from the citizens in the residential area about you know losing their buffer losing their trees uh, oh i think those are all need to be when you sit down and i think the next step and tell me if i'm wrong keith or brett is if these are two sites like let's say we eliminate black point and use eliminate the tennis court just conversation they would then take the potential footprints and i think we decided on a two-story building and see how they fit and look. So you would start putting those next, you know, overlays on there for us to see how they could look and how far. I mean, to answer your question, if, if that 211 means the community center was butted right up against that back road with no buffer, I think we'd have a lot of people complaining on it. If there was, you know, 50 to 100 to 200 feet of tree between it and they never saw it, you know, I think those are that's a different. Yeah, so, because at Memorial, you don't have the adjacency to the residential areas right close so i think proximity. those are different challenges as yeah. far as what you're looking at and different political pressures how much the the 156 or 211 though like what is the that's a lot of difference in square footage because the, how does the parking you know how does the park like these two what? sites well you're just like there actually isn't parking more i mean you can say the high school whatever but there isn't any place to put it keith you're looking at let's just say for simple math 80 square feet for a two-story two footprint 
And then how big is the parking square footage? Um, Would you have enough to do it at Memorial or not? It's like 150 doesn't, yeah, 80 and 90. We saw some of those things were 90 people. So, you know, 100, 113 parking, you know, 113 parking stalls is 45,000 square feet. So if you say uh, 120,000 square feet, that's a booth bay size park parking plus uh, a conservative footprint of the building. Because Memorial just doesn't have any other parking. It's really right next to it. Right, except that little tiny piece where the, the, the ice rink, all the parking along the side of the track of tennis courts is empty all day long. It's only used during football and after school. It's just empty. There's no, there's no one parks, unless you're playing tennis as a senior during the day. There's nobody parks in that space by the softball fields all day long. It's only used after school at night, unless there's, you know, two or three playing pickleball, but it's not right. student parking or staff parking. Is so the parking recommendation under the, are you giving a parking recommendation under the zoning ordinance or under what your experience is with the visits to a community center this size? So I think our preliminary um, analysis is going to be based on zoning. I think a next step in a, in a further study, a different study would be to have a traffic consultant look at the site in particular and all of the available parking and perform an analysis of uh, additional parking that's available depending on the time of day and how it's used and come up with a number based on its location, the proximity of potential users, the just like we were talking about earlier, if people, if kids can be, can walk over from schools or if they need to be bused or driven by a parent or a caregiver, all of that factors into that analysis and it does become quite detailed. So I think that that would be an important next step once some of these sites are further evaluated. I think the other one too, I don't know, like I think the picture they use for this one is a little different for this power here, but you would said if there is a chance for mitigation of any kind, you know, what does the site look like if you can do something in that wetland piece or instead of abiding this neighborhood, can you cheat this way? Are you in the Memorial Park? Well, right? both, they both have weird geographic so footprint. So in the Memorial the Park one, just again, without getting a tape measure out, that that's where it has wetlands is now a parking lot. That was mitigated as far as the public safety building. Is it, so there, it's there not, so it's not there anymore. Yeah, and that whole hill right now, where you see the T in the wetland, and there's that little gap, you see those green trees right there? I got my pointer right here. Yeah. This whole, yeah, right up out there in that little gap, go high to the right, right there. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that whole hill has been also mitigated because there's like 30 pines and some, some willows and stuff in there now. So that corner of that lot has been mitigated as far as public safety building goes. But the rest of it from the, where the W is back is weapons. That's that's the part that they had to keep in mitigated. Right. Okay. Not in the So. I think we'd like to get a measurement on the elevation that we saw there. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is, again, if you have to include the skate park parcel or... When you jump. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And my knees hurt from doing that. Just pull the hammy. Um, so is that the next step for us to... But if, do we... Do you want... Are you asking them to eliminate any of these before they evaluate them? If they just don't make sense and then they'll evaluate them... You know, will you get us a matrix to then evaluate to send back to you for discussion next meeting? Do you overlay now? Like, what's the next work for them to keep things going prior to the, the meeting in March? Keith, you want to go or should I go? Yeah, how about you jump in if you don't mind? So, I, I mean, I think if in this conversation, if you can eliminate any of these sites right off the bat, that's great. It just save us a, saves us a step. Um, but ideally, we would... I don't want to force anybody to make a snap decision tonight. Uh, I think it's important to consider it. And, you know, like I keep emphasizing everybody, you all are ambas ambassadors for the project to your friends and neighbors um, and to solicit other opinions as well. So if we can give you a, the matrix uh, and hand it out and get back to us over the next few weeks uh, before our next meeting, we would take all of that uh, under consideration and kind of collate that information we get and include that in the next meeting. But, you know, again, if there's a, a site or two that we can cross off right away, that would be great. 
Uh, but Todd, to answer your question more directly, then the following step after that is to do a more uh, uh, detailed look at a, a test fit of a building and the parking on these sites to understand really, you know, how does the building need to meld the site? What are the pros and cons of each site once we do that? Great. Patrick, your preference? Does anyone want to keep two on? Oh, no, I pulled, those. I pulled this page out already. Just... <laughs> so I think the, the broad consensus is two is no longer. Patrick, you there? Yeah, I'm here. I, I agree. I, I would I would eliminate two, uh, although we, we do have a lot of flexibility in the town to mitigate wetlands. That's a that's a, a lot of effort for not a whole lot of gain over the other two sites that we have on the campus. I think I'd keep the Black Point Park one just for comparison purposes, because I think it is it is a feasible so. site and it's one to have mm -hmm. that's off the campus that we could use to kind of compare costs and infrastructure and what it would mean to get people to and from that site, from the school buildings, um, that type of thing. So I think it's good to have one off site and the other two I would leave in the mix also. Um, Patrick, I'm going to respectfully disagree with you because I think it's, it's, I think that I would make a motion to take black point off the list, at least start with the ones that are more feasible first, but I guess that's for everybody to vote on or something. Well, we're just talking about for the scoring, right? We're just talking about yeah, leaving we're that. Talking, we're not talking about just for the scoring. Oh, okay. Yeah, but well, this would just be for them to come back, adjust this. Oh, I see. I, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about for the consultants to do more work. Oh, yeah. No, just that we can rank them and then we go to net given the sites based off that. Okay. All right. Thanks. The other good thing about keeping black going on is if for some reason, the two on-campus sites had to be eliminated and we had to look at a private site. You have a comparison to another town hall property because after you leave campus, you start creeping out further and further. So I think it's just a good matrix um, metric to have. I agree. And did we look at or want to identify any non-town owned sites or is that just too far off? Oh, yeah, I think the charge that, that makes sense for us is that you can look at, look at what we have and what we own. And then if it doesn't fit or doesn't make sense, then, then yeah, because I think the advantage of something we already own that me, you're not getting closer to a school than on campus, and so I think that'll rank the highest and score based on what I'm hearing. And so, um, so yeah, taking off two. Yeah, and then the question is everything from Moral Park is this all wetlands on that yes. side of the road? Yeah, and that's what basically backs up to this. Right? Yes, that, a, that space in between this. Yeah, there's a giant triangle that meets the neighborhood in the back of the ice rink. That all oh, that is. Ten fully, okay. ten to twenty feet below grade and wet. Okay. Yeah. So. So Todd, are we gonna um are are we gonna like each rank these and then send numbers to you to to? Yeah. So what we'll is do is I'll work thing? with Patrick and the consultants. They'll they'll reshape the um the make the uh, metric sheet uh, criteria sheet, get it to me, and then I'll vet it through Patrick, and then we'll send it out to the committee. Give you guys a timeline to score and rank on your own. Get it back to me, and I'll get the date needs the the due dates from the consultant team to get it back to them prior to our March meeting, so they can do some due diligence and um, be able to speak to some of that at our next meeting. Did I paraphrase that, Brett and Keith? That sounds good. Absolutely right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Do you guys All have right. anything else for us tonight? Are we at that? No, nope, this is, you know, we'll, where we'll end up. Um, yeah. And so, you know, we'll, we'll view and level of scores and we'll, we'll talk about uh, some sites participating. And then uh, we'll, we'll talk about, you know, how we uh, are thinking about approaching the open house and we can talk about uh, some of Yeah, some I'm examples. still working on trying to find some potential dates. We were looking to see if we can create any programming. They're reaching out to the school now to see if they have anything major going on that we can piggyback with. So I'll try to get you an answer end of the week and then get the dates so you guys can verify your availability and then share with them. All right. Thanks, guys. All right, that uh, sounds good. Thank you. Next on the agenda, next item yep. on the agenda, Patrick, public comment. We know we're, then the next one is um, our next meeting, which we know is March 21st, and then adjourn. So public comment is next, Patrick. 
Are there any members of the public on Zoom or in the room? Yeah, I am Don St. Germain. Go ahead, Don. Hi. I thought it was a great presentation. I, I'm, I'm just an interested resident. I had one question, though. Um, you know, this beautiful facility you're thinking about, when you're building this type of a recreational activity, large space building, do you take into account the possibility of needing to use that for disaster uh, circumstances? Mm -hmm. Is that designed into the building, some storage or thinking about that? In shelter emergency. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, Dawn. Yeah, that's something we we would consider. Most wise or community centers, uh, certain parts of the building um, are considered based on the volume, so it could be a consideration for a shelter or uh -huh. heating or cooling. Um, I know my last building, uh, we 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 had half of the building being able to run off a generator, and we used the heat. We knew we had heat from the pool, so we used that energy. And so there's ways to design it, and um, we had. Items like cots and you know and rations upstairs to be able to do it. So yeah, but they were all the you know what do you call them? To rip it, need it. Oh right, right, yeah. right. But anyway, so yes, there's definitely a possibility uh, in in doing that. Yeah, just curious. And we would work with the public safety folks to kind of right. evaluate the need for that, in in, in respect to all of the other spaces that we have in town that have generator services that you could do like Todd said warming or cooling or even overnights for disaster recovery. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Any, Any other more? members of the public? Not in present. Okay. And uh you gave our next meeting date. Um I think we're back to Thursdays. For, I think we have one more meeting on a Monday, maybe uh, at some point, but we're on, on our regular schedule for Thursdays at seven. And I, uh, barring any other comments by the committee members or our liaisons, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. 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 Liz, we got a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Yes. 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 Got to keep going like this till we find golf. Yeah. I just quiet.